then you need to know about the purpose of RBI, the scope of RBI. There are 12 steps. So you should know, the first step you should know what are the design assumptions, you know, the corrosion philosophy, like normally they say three millimeter every 25 years is the corrosion allowance. Most of the carbon steel material I've seen. Uh, then you plan to, how to carry the RBI assist, assessment. Is it qualitative, quantitative, and semi-quantitative? So I'll explain this. Qualitative normally is a lot based on judgment. Like people who work in the industry, they know that, you know, this is a, it's a common sense. Like this, there is a one-off equipment. If it fails, the whole plant fails. It's very important that it is, its reliability is high. So first you select by your judgment and or where you normally had previously problem, you identify those equipments. Quantitative is the other extreme of this is a spectrum. So based on all these facts and figures, you try to uh, see the, uh, and it's more time consuming, obviously. And so it's not based on judgment or professional experience. It's more based on facts and figures. So that's quantitative. And it's never um, purely qualitative and quantitative RBI. It's always semi. So you use a combination of these approaches. So what normally um, most of the plants they do is they first identify the high risk drivers. So that is based on judgment rather than going to scrutinize each and every piece of equipment. And then um, once those high risk drivers are selected, then they go more quantitative than qualitative. Now they would look at the previous uh, ND and inspection reports. They look at the uh, corrosion uh, rate and corrosion trend and the locations that it normally happened. Um, look at all this data. Uh, uh, so based on that and the damage mechanism that happened that caused that failure and uh, the inspection that covered uh, that or the examination method that NDE that can cover that. And then um, they prepare the inspection plan or the RBI risk-based inspection. So you have to collect all the data first for this, um, you know, design data, design calculation, testing reports, previous inspection, and uh, then check that if these data are actually valid because they can be misleading. Make sure that to cross-check this data, they said they are valid, that you're going to base your assumptions and your final report based on those initial data, like thickness measurement and all. Uh, how confident, what is your confidence level? And then identify potential damage mechanism, assign a degree of severity, which one is more severe, which one is less severe, because there is not one single damage mechanism. There are several, but one would be predominant or they would be like have a domino effect. And what would be the consequence of failure if that happens? So from there, you can find the risk, which identifies um, where you have to focus and how to manage that risk. And then in the meantime, you can consult with operation maintenance, piping engineer, corrosion specialist, um, to see what sort of risk uh, mitigation activities you, you could do, like using an inhibitor, you know, changing the material for that particular process, reducing the pressure, whatever, you know, or more monitoring of that area using, uh, you know, alarms, uh, pressure, temperature, transmitters, that sort of thing. And then you do a re reassessment because as I said, it's a live document. Uh, your initial parameters that you have chosen, it might change over the time. Okay. Um, and uh, also you should know about responsibility and training uh, responsibilities. The RBI philosophy approach methodology, because it's a team, as I said, it's not a one-man show. And ultimately, uh, you should correlate the risk with the inspection efforts and see that uh, it's aligned with the damage and location and size. So you're actually capturing what is important, not, not what is unimportant. Um, and then you should prioritize your inspection effort and the degree of risk involved and flag of major risk drivers and uh, generate an inspection plan. So the major um, thing is an uh, inspection report, the output of a R RBI. Um, 
and then other non-inspection activities that you recommend like fire detection, emergency shutdown to mitigate the risk in case of this. So you should have a plan B uh, to decrease the consequence of failure in case that happens. And overall, you're bringing down the risk. Um, and then estimate the reduction of risk based on what uh, the inspection plan and recommendation and see whether you brought the risk between the acceptable limit. Um, so for this, you need a program, obviously, um, and it should be documented uh, because reassessment is only possible when we can compare the initial assumptions and data with the existing ones. So you need a baseline or a comparison. So that's why you need to be documented. Um, um, so, uh, and then we have discussed here um, different scenarios, what, how you do that with, uh, uh, when you receive the data and how you validate that and, and what PAOF depends on, obviously on damage mechanism and confidence level of inspection and CO depends on volume of leakage and speed of vaporization or how much damage it can cause actually that's a consequence of this and eventually you would have this risk you should know about uh, what risk means um, and what are the rbi benefits um, the reassessment we talk about and you can use it as a continuous improvement tool and remember that it's a live document so you need to be periodically reassessed uh, normally maximum is 10 years the cap as i say and you can use it as a integrated management tool. And there are other tools like um, process hazard analysis or reliability center maintenance and RBI is not a replacement for them, but it's complementing them. 